In this video, we are going to learn about interaction of radiation with matter from quantum mechanical point of view and distinguishing characteristics of spontaneous emission and stimulated emission. Let us begin with interaction of radiation with matter from quantum mechanical point of view. An atom can move from one energy level to another le higher level while it receives energy or an atom releases energy and that amount is equal to the energy difference between the two energy states. Let us consider a monochromatic light radiation to be incident on the material. The incident radiation is considered to be a stream of photons. Each photon carrying an energy h mu. h mu is equal to e2 minus e1. e2 is a higher level and e1 is a lower level. The interaction of radiation with atoms leads to three different processes. Absorption of radiation, spontaneous emission of radiation and stimulated emission of radiation. The first one that is absorption of radiation. An atom in the ground state can absorb the energy H mu which is equal to E2 minus E1 of the incident photon and can undergo a transition from E1 to E2. This process is called absorption. A plus H mu is equal to A star. A represents the atom at the lower level E1, whereas A star represents the atom at the higher level. A, A plus H mu is equal to A star. The number of absorptions taking place in the material during the time interval delta t is proportional to the number of atoms at lower level and photon density. So we, uh, we have here in this equation if an AB, an AB is AB means absorption. So if an AB is the number of atoms excited during the time interval delta t it is equal, it is directly proportional to the number of atoms in the lower level and the photon density during the time interval delta t. So B12 is called as constant of proportionality and it is called as Einstein's coefficient of induced absorption. Next we'll see spontaneous emission. The atom in the excited state here is highly unstable and within a short time that is about 10 days to minus 8 seconds it tries to come back to its normal state that is the ground state E1 and in doing so it releases the excess of energy that is H mu. So we have this equation here the atom in the excited state A star will release the energy H mu and will come back to atom A, original atom. So spontaneous emission is emission of photon, emission of photon by an atom without external stimulation. If NSP is the number of spontaneous emission, SP means spontaneous emission, it depends only on the number of atoms in the excited state that is N2. So we have here NSP is equal to N2 directly proportional to N2 during the time delta T. A21 is the constant of proportionality called as Einstein's coefficient of spontaneous emission. Next we have here is stimulated emission. Now this requires a presence of external radiation. If an incident photon, see here, H mu. If an incident photon strikes an atom in the excited state, then it, get for, it can force it 
to return back to the ground state at that instant of time which is well before the atom can make a spontaneous transition in this process two identical photons see here two identical photons are released are emitted this process is called as stimulated emission you can see it from this equation here a star plus h mu is equal to a plus 2h mu a star is a plus h mu so h mu plus h mu will be 2 times h mu that is how we get two identical photons now if ns st if nst is the number of stimulated emission then it is directly proportional to the number of atoms in the excited state and the photon density during the time delta t so we can write this equation as like this nst is equal to n2 q into delta t v21 is called the constant of proportionality and it is called as einstein's coefficient of stimulated emission next we will see the multiplication of stimulated photons now stimulated emission results in the emission of two identical photons which are exactly identical in energy phase and direction now these two photons can in turn strike another two excited atoms and stimulate them to de-excite them and resulting in the emission of four more photons this four more uh, uh, photons can again strike another four atoms in the excited state and stimulate them to de excite to the ground state okay and uh, emit again four plus four eight okay in this way the photons they double up so it will be square and within a short duration a large number of identical photons will be emitted this is called as light amplification the net intensity of light is directly proportional to the square of the atoms radiating light so we have here i total is equal to n square into i now since the number of atoms in the material medium is very large coherent emission leads to enormously high intense light and we say that the incident light is amplified therefore the process of stimulated emission is the key to the operation of laser in this way the laser word is coined as light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation now let us see the distinguishing properties of spontaneous and stimulated emission a spontaneous emission can take place between two normal energy levels whereas a stimulated emission can take place only between two energy levels where upper level is metastable the metastable state is not required in spontaneous emission whereas in stimulated emission metastable state is required photons emitted by spontaneous emission are not monochromatic since they have different energy whereas the photons which are emitted by the process of stimulated emission are highly monochromatic since all of them have same phase, same energy and same direction. Photons are highly incoherent in spontaneous emission, whereas photons are highly coherent in stimulated emission. Photons are multidirectional in spontaneous emission. Photons are highly unidirectional in stimulated emission the power output is very low in spontaneous emission whereas the power output is very high in 
stimulated emission.